What's going on guys? This is Martyrs Brigade 99 coming to you once again with another session of Dark Souls PvP. Alright guys, we're back at it once again with another session of Battle of the Uploaders. Alright, before we get started I'd like to offer my thanks and show of appreciation to good old Lance for life. Now, in the event that you guys are, f are not familiar with the uh, Dark Souls Twitch streamers, Lance is one of the guys that, um, uh, he's one of those PvP streamers right now. If you guys are familiar with the Twitch, you guys would know that, you know, there's a lot of guys that like to stream, you know, speed runs or PvE, right? But there's a nice community of streamers that make PvP con contributions, and he's one of them. Right? And actually, um, he's not really limited to PS3 because he also has Dark Souls on Xbox and PC although he plays primarily on the PS3 now you guys may be thinking to yourself like dude I mean the arena seriously well you know the thing is I really wanted a change of environment so I said you know what let's do a little different let's just go ahead and grab some level 100 builds and go ahead down into the arena Right, so this is what we're going to do. Go ahead, change the scene up a little bit, and use our Soul Level 100 builds. Now, actually, this is my only Soul Level 100 build. I might come up with one more, because based upon my own personal experience, um, whenever I want to do like a lot of random invasions, Soul Level 100 is, seems to be the best level in my personal opinion. And basically, you know, I get a lot of guys. Especially some of the newer guys, you know, maybe they're, you know, maybe they just got the game, maybe, you know, they played a lot of PvE, but not really, uh, haven't really involved themselves in PvP. I get the question a lot, like, hey dude, I mean, you know, what is the best level for PvP, right? And, you know, my personal suggestion is if you want to do a lot of random invasions, Meaning you're not concentrating on these formal setup matches, but if you want to involve yourself in a lot of random invasions, I would say uh, keep your levels anywhere uh, below 100, so 100 and below. And the reason why I say that is because at level 100, you still have a lot of guys still uh, playing throughout the game. right? You can find them in a lot of areas. I mean, I've even found guys in Blighttown. With my level, uh, with my soul level 100 build, right? So I would say 100 and under. If you like to do a lot of random invasions and you know, let's just say Tomb of the Giants, Catacombs, and some of these other areas. Now, this is not to say that you won't be able to get PvP at any higher level, but based upon my own personal experience, your rate of invasions will be higher right at uh, 100 and below than it would be at 125 now in my personal opinion although there is a whole bunch of pvp at 125 it seems to me like 125 is kind of like you know whenever you want to do uh, formal matches like in other words you have finished your build and basically you just want to compete amongst other uh, soul level 120 to 130 builds Right, so I mean, that's basically how I see it. Now, I know some of you guys may have different experiences than myself, but me personally, I would say random invasions 100 and below. If you want to be more competitive with regards to your builds, go ahead and go somewhere between 120 to 130. All right, so enough about that. Like I said before, this is my soul level 100 build. Now, we are dealing with Lance's mage build, as you guys can see. Right? He's got the Moonlight Greatsword, he's got White Magics, he's got Dark Magics, he's got the whole nine. All right? And for any of you guys that like to complain about how OP Dark Magics are, my answer to you would be, listen guys, Dark Magics have been out for a while. Right? And this is to the extent that you've had Dark Souls for a while. Um, Dark Magics have been out for a while. And maybe in the beginning... You know, when we were all still kind of new to Dark Magics. You know, I can understand you saying, holy crap, I mean, what can you do with that? Can't really do anything. But now that we've had the DLC, 
Um, you know, we've had these dark magics for a while. They're not really OP. Now, granted, you know, in the cases that lag may, you know, not be on your side, you may not be able to dodge all of the dark magics. But can you avoid a lot of them? You sure can. And as a matter of fact, um, I'm able to escape uh, dark magics more than I experience lag personally. Now, like I said before, there are some cases where I'm like, man, I mean, I totally dodged out on my screen, although I will still get hit. But there's other times when, I mean, I could just jump through it with no problem. So for a lot of you guys, especially in fight clubs, here's just a suggestion. Now, I know you guys have your own rules. You can set your standards according to however you want to do it. But especially in fight clubs, just think about it, guys. Most of the people that participate in fight clubs are experienced PvPers. And many of them have had this game for a while. And I know in some of the fight clubs that I have watched or participated in, you know, one of the rules will be, you know, no dark magics. And it's like, come on, dude, you're dealing with experienced players. You're not really dealing with noobs. So in other words, if you're dealing with experienced players, then experienced players should be able to avoid these dark magics. So that's just a suggestion. And, um, you know, just a little... Uh, food for thought for a lot of you guys to continue to think that dark magics are OP. Now, this is not to say that, um, you know, th this is not to minimize the potential for dark magics. Lord knows, I acknowledge the full strength and capabilities of what dark magics can do. But what I am saying is, as long as this game has been out, especially with the dark magics, we should be able to maneuver through them. You know, I kind of liken the whole situation to Wrath of Gods. I remember when Dark Souls came, first came out. Because actually, for any of you guys that are familiar with Demon Souls, there was a variation to the Wrath of Gods. And it was a lot different than the variation that we have here in Dark Souls. So when Dark Souls first came out, it's kind of like, holy crap, that Wrath of Gods is so OP. But after time went on, we all realized that, hold on, Wrath of Gods is not OP. I mean, you could just simply jump through it. I mean, you know, fast roll, ninja flip, obviously, and medium roll. And as a matter of fact, I've even seen some guys jump through Wrath of the Gods with the fat boy roller. Right? So I say all this to say that just because something may seem OP in the beginning, with a little time, experimentation, and attention to detail you will realize that, you know, some things are not as OP as they seem. All right, so enough of that rant. So we're back at it. He's got his mage build, and he's pulling out all the stops. He's got the dark magic. He's got the white magic, moonlight greatsword, and he has the uh, moonlight butterfly horn. All right, now, one thing about that moonlight greatsword, I mean, I get stuck all the time with those R2s all the time i don't know what it is about those r2s and i mean granted they are tricky because in one sense you will think that you guys just see how i kept invading those uh pursuers you guys just go ahead and pay matter of fact before i continue just pay close attention to what i'm doing guys one tactic that i would use because actually when the when i was first exposed to the dark magics one thing that i would do is kind of, you know, jump to the left and right, you know, to kind of outmaneuver it. But as time went on, you guys will notice, you know, and, and actually, to the extent that there are no uh, no other pursuer casts in the future, just kind of rewind a little bit and pay attention to my tactic. What I will do is, once I see him casting it, I would kind of, you know, draw my character back and forth, right um, in an effort to draw the pursuers in my direction once I do that I unlock and I basically jump right in the direction of the pursuers and in most cases no damage guys absolutely no damage so like I said before just go ahead and check out the tactics and just do a little experimentation on your own you guys will see that pursuers and dark beat is not as bad as it may seem now um 
I think his build, uh, like I said before, these are soul level 100 builds. And I think his build only has, I don't know, 40 or 45 vitality. I know one thing uh, that we were kind of chatting about during these matches. He was like, man, I mean, uh, granted, I have the magics. And if they hit you, I mean, you'll be in trouble. But the downside is that I have low vitality. So, I mean, obviously, with Soul Level 100, you have limitations. Now, go ahead, check this out. You guys notice what I'm doing? I'm going to try to go ahead, draw it to me. And then I see that I jumped right in the direction of the pursuers. And actually, I did that on a number of occasions because he cast it a few times. So that's what I mean, guys. When I say, listen, when it comes to fight clubs or just formal matches, granted, we're not talking about the spammers because there are some guys that just hit the R1 button repeatedly, especially on those dark beads. But to the extent that you are an experienced player, you shouldn't have to worry about those dark magics. Now, his build, like I said before, definitely keep me on my toes because I have so many things to worry about. You know, I have the Moonlight Greatsword with its effective R2s that can, you guys notice that? Those dome shots, right? I won't even get hit by the beam. It's just the dome shots that I get affected by, which is very tricky, especially when you're dealing with a skilled player, right? Because either they can aim straight at you while locked on, they can aim at the ground, or maybe they can aim, you know, to their left or right. And lastly, they can aim directly behind them. And because, you guys notice that? He just did it. He aimed right behind him because a few, in a few instances in the past, as soon as I see him charging with that R2, I'll just basically try to jump over it and BS him for a punish. So after doing that on a number of occasions, I guess he caught wind of it and said, oh, okay, so this guy want to keep jumping behind me. Well, I got something for him. Right? And that's one of the ways that you can kind of manipulate those R2s, right, both one-handed and one-handed, although I think those two-handed R2s are a little more effective. All right, so my build, really nothing special about my build. I mean, you know, you guys see that I'm using elemental weapons, so this is basically um, a basic build where I'm using one weapon and it's an elemental, right? So I haven't invested any points in, um, in strength or dexterity other than basically for the minimum stats. And actually, I'm not even so level 100, <laughs> right? This build is like, I mean, it's not like it makes that really that much of a difference, but I'm like so level 90 something. Right, but and actually, I got lucky right there because if you guys notice, he charged that beam right behind him as well. Just so happened that my flip attempt did not go the full distance, so I got a little lucky in that instance. All right, so he's going for those running R ones, and we're good to go. GGS. All right, now another thing. Uh, you know, it is very rare that I'm in the arena, but, you know, sometime for this weekend's upload, I'm going to have a few uh, team battles, which should really be uh, interesting. As a matter of fact, in those team battles, I'm even throwing out dark hands. I'm even dark handing on people. <laughs> right. So you guys can go ahead and look forward to that. And like I said before, you know, sometimes I just want a little change of scenery. I know in a lot of my battle of the uploaders, I end up finding myself uh, in the dark root garden. You guys notice that? Flip right through pursuers. It is not that OP, guys. Not that OP. Now, speaking of OP, um, to the extent that you guys have had Dark Souls for a while, I'm pretty sure that you guys know that the um, elemental weapons used to be really OP actually which is why a lot of people used to prefer them especially on those vitality gouge builds now one thing if you guys pay close attention my lightning halberd does really nothing right I'm inflicting like a hundred I think on a one hand swing I get like a hundred and ninety damage just go ahead and pay close attention to the next time I hit him with a one hand hit Right? So, I can definitely tell that it's been nerfed. 
But at the same time, for some reason, when it comes to my criticals, especially my reposts, I can do nearly a thousand damage. <laughs> right? So I don't know if the regular R1 and R2 attacks were nerfed or I don't know what and actually I think perhaps the uh, riposte and backstab attacks uh, damage potential remain the same but only the R1 and R2 attacks receive the nerf I'm not really sure because you guys are going to pay close attention um, because I know with my quality build uh, or dexterity whatever you want to call it a two handed halberd hit would inflict somewhere like 400 damage somewhere like you know 415 ish 450 to 430 best case scenario and one hand I would hit for like 325 or so but if you guys pay close attention to my one handed hits with the halberd I'm only doing like 187 damage I mean that's that's really nothing so granted he doesn't really have that much vitality but to the extent that I am not backstabbing or hitting him with a repost I mean I'm not really doing anything to him right not really doing anything at all all right so we're good to go and and I think I might have to do a test on that because I mean granted my quality build Hallbird does a lot of damage on backstabs and reposts but I don't think I get like, you know, 952 on a repose like I have, uh, like I've gotten uh, with this lightning halberd. So I don't know, I might have to do a little testing when comparing regular attacks to uh, uh, critical attacks. All right, GG's right there. So, like I said, I'm going to go ahead and put Lance for Life's uh, Twitch and YouTube links in the description box. Hopefully you guys will go ahead and check out his YouTube uh, uploads and go ahead and check those things out. Perhaps you'll learn something. Now, I'm not really sure if he does commentary. I don't really think he uh, adds commentary. But, you know, in the event that you guys are kind of like onto commentary, you could just go ahead and check out his live streams. For which, I mean... It's basically commentary because he's basically commenting on everything that's going on at the time. Now, I don't really think he has any set times for his streams, right? But I do know in some cases he's on in the mornings and a lot of weekends, right? So a lot of weekends. You guys just noticed that repose damage for 952. And like I said before, that's what, 48 points short of 1,000. Right, so that's pretty good damage with that lightning weapon. Alright, so he just barely missed me with that dome R2 right there. And you know what? Now that's one thing I have never really gotten on. I've never really gotten on the Moonlight Greatsword kick. Alright, um, I don't know. Those R2s have always been a little too risky. Now, I see how effective other people have been able to use them. But me, myself, I don't know. I've just never really been on the kick. Me, myself, I kind of prefer either the Claymore or the Bastard Sword. And, you know, to the extent that I'm using the Strength Weapon, obviously the Man Serving Great Sword as an alternative. But I don't know. I might kind of, I do have a Mage build. I might do a little experimenting with it. We'll see. All right, so not close enough for those parries. And actually, whenever, because a lot of these guys who use these great swords, one thing that they will do, they'll do a lot of these running arm one attacks. And the thing about that is you almost have to walk into them before you parry, right? Because what they try to do is, in some cases, kind of swing behind you to where you can't block the hit. Or something else. You guys notice that? I just unlocked and flipped right into the direction of the pursuers. Or another thing that they would do. They would kind of just graze you with the tip. Therefore still inflicting you with damage. Right? But uh, one thing that you can do whenever you see those running R1s. To the extent that they are not doing it unlocked. Right? You could just kind of step into them. You guys notice that? I had to step into them to get that successful parry. 
right? So that definitely requires a little timing and experimentation, but with a little trial and error, you will be successful. All right, guys, well, this is pretty much it. Thanks again, Lance, for your participation and showcase of your mage build for the Battle of the Uploader series. Um, and like I said before, please check out his Twitch and his YouTube channel. Well, guys, until next time, Martyr's Brigade is...